Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heat, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin. We are working our way through Outsider, the 23rd studio album from Uriah Heap, released in June 2014. We are all the way up to song number four, The Outsider, which is very similar to the album title, but not exactly. I always find that interesting. Actually, this is probably the first instance I can recall where there was a basic title track, but with a slight difference to it. Uh, Anyway, it's a great song. It starts out really heavy, really driving. Let's just get right into it. Here we go. What a blistering, killer beginning to a rock song, right? Uh, great tempo, great speed, really powerful drumming from Russell Gilbrook. I really like the way that he changes it to a little bit of crashes and then ride in that second part. Um, great bass to follow him. And then, of course, we've got a, a very, very solid riff from Mick. And I don't talk about this enough, I don't think, but he is he plays with such precision. You know, there's a lot of guitarists that they'll play the riff, but, you know, there's a lot of variation in how it's played, not in the way of we're trying to change something, but it's just, you know, they pick one note a little faster than the other and it changes the feel of it. Mick is always just so precise. And, uh, and, and it really, it really just makes the song, I think a little bit more solid. Um, but also, you know, the keyboards backing that too, backing the riff. I like the way that they change, uh, that they're not playing exactly along with him. And in the end, they kind of come out on their own and it's, it's a really good blend. And of course, a powerful vocal delivery here. You know, Bernie, like I said, uh, I think it was on the last review that I did. He he sounds a little grittier on this album, which I think works, you know, with this heavier sound that the band's developed over the last couple of albums, really since Russell joined. And uh, I think that that little bit of extra grit really works for this kind of music. Um, I also find it interesting. Now, Russell changes here in the chorus part back to the crash cymbal, writing on the crash cymbal again. But here it's dialed down into the mix and it blended where it doesn't encroach in on anything else. This is the way that you do that, right? Like I talked about some of the other songs where he's kind of overriding some of the other instruments in the mix, and that's got nothing to do with him. That's That comes down to the way it was mixed. But here, you know, he can still pull off that sound and, and give that effect, but it's low enough in the mix where it doesn't actually, you know, override my ability to hear any of the other instruments. So I like this mixing much better for that style of playing. He sees the shadows closing in. Did you guys hear that? Did you feel something a little weird there where the line was, he has really no direction? The music, the beat of it really changed. It made me feel like it was almost starting out as double time, but it wasn't. That was really a, a like a surprise, you know? Let me play that part again and see if you guys catch what I caught. I think what it is, is that the snare comes in early and 
it almost sounds like he's trying to catch up, which of course I know is not the case because if he had missed it and you know got lost in the song, they would have just started re-recording it. But there's something really weird about the way that comes in. So he hits an early snare, which kind of throws it off. But then halfway through the line, he's caught up again to where the beat is and it doesn't skip at all. I mean, I, I played a straight beat right through it, you know, just just slapping my hand on my knee and he's exactly where he's supposed to be. So that is a really weird transition, but very interesting one and adds an incredibly different dynamic to the song. I like that. I, I, I kind of want to play with that idea for, on something of my own now. Thanks, Russell. He's always right When he catches his reflection In the middle of the night You know, for some reason, and it's not exactly the same by any means, but for some reason this part reminds me of I'll Keep On Trying from Very Evy, Very Humble. Um, just has that that same feel for me, maybe it's just something about the guitar progression. I'm not sure. It's a little faster, uh, definitely. But uh, yeah, for some reason, my mind just drew back to that. The outsider's incantations falling on their fears While the world's own machinations always end in tears He's a old free rider He is the outsider Wow, he pulled it off again. That is so precise, too. That's pretty incredible. Uh, listening to drums played like that just really makes me happy because it's not what you would expect. It's completely out of the ordinary, but it's also just a couple of measures. You know, it's it's not even a whole line or a whole section of a song. It's just that one little spot where you do something just enough to change the feel of the song. It's amazing how easy that is to to do. Not easy to play it that way. I don't mean that. I mean, just easy to change the feel of a song by making one subtle change in one instrument. Uh, but I really like that part. I think that's really cool and ear catching to me. And another just killer solo from Mick. It, you know, on this album, it feels like he's just been stuck not playing for a long time. And he's just coming out exploding with notes. Just fantastic. A lot of variety in this solo. Uh, really like it. But another highlight, honestly, is once again, the band that's backing him. I like what Phil's playing in the background there. And also Davey's coming in with some of those higher notes like he tends to do. And it really just the dynamics during this whole section are really amazing. We tend to kind of go, OK, I know the rhythm's doing something and we, you know, we just let that do its thing while we focus on whatever the lead instrument is. In this case, it'd be Mick. And but there's wow, there's so much going on behind him. That's really cool. You kind of want to listen to it a few times and make sure that you, you soak it all in. Oh, 
great ending. I love that. I love that little swell on the organ. I love that last bass note, that run down the string. That was really cool. Uh, a very tight, you know, really tight band on this album. It's interesting. We, you know, we've changed a member again, and yet they feel like they've been playing together forever. Davey fits right in just like Russell did when he joined. And it, it has, there has to be some element of difficulty replacing such iconic people. I mean, Lee Kerslake, Trevor Boulder, uh, you know, those, those are tough acts to follow, but both of these guys have jumped in really made the role their own while keeping an element of the tradition of the player before them. And I think that's really cool. You know, you you go into a band and it's a combination of becoming part of the sound of that band, but also your sound still coming through in there. You know, some combination of that because you you don't necessarily write the way that your predecessor wrote, but for the previous songs, you know, whatever you play that is theirs, plus just the overall sound of the band, you know, if you're too far off the mark, you're not going to get the job anyway, let's face it. But yeah, it's, it's got to be tough to follow guys like that. But both of them have done a, a great job. And just listen to the writing and the performance on this song. It's just stunning from start to finish. Really cool parts. It just comes out on fire. It ends on fire. Uh, relentless is what I would say if I had to describe this song in one word. Um, relentless would definitely be it, but it's, it's a great song. It really is. I guess great would be another word I would use. Um, but in any case, yeah, I'm sure that you're, uh, you're on your feet now, ready to take on the day. If you're listening to this at the start of your day, if you're listening to this on your way home, maybe you're, you're pumped up to work on a project or, you know, do something, do something fun today. Uh, this song is all about just gearing yourself up. So make it happen. We will see you guys again tomorrow for another show. Have a great day, guys. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>